Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be airbrushing some uh, marders and I'm going to be taking you through how I go about airbrushing them. These are some plastic uh, battlefront marders and I will discuss how I rate the kit itself later on in the video. So um, fast forward to that if you want to know. But if you're here to watch the uh, process, then yeah, follow along with me. So um, I'm going to prime the plastic uh, models first with to me surface primer gray and then i'm going to base coat them in the dark yellow two uh to me a dark yellow two paint um i've put a lot in the palette here you obviously wouldn't need this much for free you probably need about half of that if if, if not a, a little less um i'm adding a few drops of thinners in there i'm using a 0 0.40 millimeter needle and nozzle for my harder and stain back um, airbrush that's why I wasn't really adding too much thinner, thinner in that paint because um, the needle and nozzle is quite big already. So with that nicely primed um, vehicle, I'm now putting that dark yellow base coat on. The primer I use um, is a rattle can. It's not um, uh, not like a paint that you can uh, or a primer that you can airbrush on. Uh, if you've got multiple airbrushes, then that's definitely a, a, a lot better option. I airbrush um, in the garage, so I have to set it up every time. So it's just easy to use a rattle cam. Once, that's, uh, once that base coat is down, I'm then doing a form of modulation. Um, mine is very relaxed, very um, carefree <laughs> almost. So I'm using XF88, which is that dark yellow too, and deck tan. Um, a lot more it, with this modulation this color i'm using um deck tan as the main color and then i'm just adding a couple of drops of um that dark yellow too now i'm just painting um i'm oh, sorry i'm just airbrushing like panels and the sides of panels um and i'd also like to hit the wheels i like to make the wheels a little lighter because i find that a lot of people will add like pigments washes all that stuff to the wheels and the wheels will lose a lot of their um, detail um, so I find the lighter the color it, if you put on that darker wash and that I still find it helps out a little bit there again each to their own if you prefer the darker wheel look especially if you're gonna be somebody smothering it in mud and or dust or whatever like that then that's um, that's obviously up to you but this scale I think um, if the wheels stand out that's awesome so then I'm gonna move on to the green that um, I'll be painting on the Marders. So I'm using XF89, which is to me a dark green two. Uh, fantastic color. Um, I couldn't rate this green um, any higher. I think for just a gen just for the generic late war, mid war German green, it's fantastic. You can obviously go a bit brighter, a bit lighter if that's what you wanna do, but um, for just a generic color for somebody starting out and you want to get an idea of what colors to use for late war german vehicles this green is a must-have definitely get this green to me a red brown too and to me a dark yellow too they're the three primary colors you're going to need then you're going to add your whites later on you're going to add um, your lighter color so your buff and your deck tan if you want that modulation you can do the same with the brown color and, and the green you can add like a lighter green or a a lighter brown to them just to modulate those um, thicker um, camo patterns if you want uh, I, n I never do that at this scale at the bigger scales I would but for this scale no I'll just do that um, I only find myself modulating like allied vehicles for example where it's just one one color or like your mid-war German stuff um, the reason I modulated these or I say modulated um, yeah, you know a form of modulation um, was because the dark yellow is the primary color so it's going to stand out a lot more than than the camo um, so I'm putting in that bit of foam as a protection I don't want the inner cab of those uh, martyrs to get any paint being sprayed in there by mistake again I'm, I'm quite casual because you get a lot of control with the airbrush um, setup that I've got so I'm using the 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle um, I, if if you've watched my videos before you know I, I rave about that as well um you just get so much more control so there's a there's a bit of room for error if you make the odd mistake you know you're you're normally going to be able to fix it up by just making the line a little bit thicker or you know uh, making the um the camo a, a, a little bit more uh, flowy for example so i'm 
been quite uh, generous with the spray that I'm doing on the wheels here because uh, I want to uh, make them stand out. The, those green panels on the wheels stand out. Uh, the camo scheme that I'm going for is something I just found off um, Google and that's normally the way. I'll just look on Google, get a few images, okay, and I'll look and say, okay, um, you know, there's some historical references here, so they def definitely used a pattern like this. When you're painting three or four or however many, you, you want to change it up. No German tank came out of the factory looking identical in terms of these kind of camo schemes. And a lot of it was applied in the field. So you've got a bit of freedom to um, sort of paint it the way that you'd think the, the crew might have wanted it painted. Um, but try and use those historical references or a book or, um, you know, YouTube or whatever um, as your sort of base for your, um, for your research. So I'll be painting the green and then the brown will be getting added onto the side of the green. So um, I'm going to be wanting to make sure that I'm leaving enough room um, so that we've got a lot of yellow being left over. So I'm spreading the green bits of the camo apart. So I'm not making them too close to each other because I don't want to blow it out and then it just becomes a green and, and brown uh, tank. I want to make sure that that yellow is the primary color that, that you'll see and then you'll see the camo pattern. Um, so I said that I would talk about the actual kit itself. I really rate this this plastic kit from Battlefront. It's fantastic. The only thing that was missing was the handlebar that was uh, that you see on all the Marders on the, oh sorry, on all the Marder 3Ms. Um, so I just used uh, brass one millimeter rod to get that, to get that, um, that look that I wanted to achieve. So now I'm going for the brown. So this Tamiya XF64, which is red brown, is very dark. So I've actually gone like almost 50-50 with the white to brown. It ends up looking a little bit purpley. Um, I know it doesn't look it here, but when I was spraying, I was going, oh, it's, it, it, it's a, just on the cusp of looking slightly purple. Fortunately, it's not. Um, I mean, I could have used a lighter brown to achieve this look, but I wanted to see what it would look like with 50-50 ratio of brown and white. And the end um, look I actually really liked, so I was quite happy with that. Um, you can see just before I was sort of pointing the finger, where am I going to be spraying? And that's always a good thing. So get an idea before you start spraying away where you actually want your lines to go. Don't rush into it. Um, I'm telling you this and then I find myself rushing into a lot of the paint jobs that I do or the airbrushing I do, but take it from me when I've made many mistakes uh, rushing, just take your time. Um, as long as you've got your thinners to paint ratio correct, this paint will, won't dry super quick. When you're using the 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle, you want to make sure that your thinners to paint ratio is one to one. Don't um, go higher than that, uh, purely because you'll just be spraying out thinners and it will go all over the place. But don't, um, you know, don't put less thinner in purely because it will clog that um, that need. Uh, sorry, that nozzle, uh, that nozzle hole is tiny. So any tiny bit of paint buildup is going to block that that nozzle and you're going to be having all kinds of problems and then you'll end up ruining your good paint job. Uh, fortunately, I haven't, I'm yet to do that, touch wood, um, purely because I did a bit of research before I used the uh, 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle set that I bought for this, um, but it will happen. I have added too much thinner and the paint starts running away super easy. You can fix it. And that's the great thing with airbrushing. You you can normally fix your mistakes. So if you if you start getting the paint running away, don't be afraid to just let it dry and go back over it. Um, or the other great thing is you can just put a bit of storage over it or a green tarp, for example. Um, but yeah, don't lose faith if you make a little mistake. It's obviously when it goes a bit too crazy goes all over the vehicle and you're going to be a bit you're going to have to be coming up with a some sort of plan to fix that so you can see that i'm um 
airbrushing super close to this uh, MARTA, that's because I've got my PS, I'm sorry, my compressor set at 15 psi. Um, so it's you know bugger all airs coming out of that. Sometimes even go down to 10. You're going to be achieving super um, fine lines at this this psi with this um, needle. So if you are wanting to go for that like Normandy Tiger Tank look, where it's just super thin green and brown lines going over the um, chassis and, and a turret, then you're going to get that look f um, using this needle and nozzle. Um, I think I put a picture in maybe my second video where I was explaining explaining this. So if you want a, a, a better understanding of this and um, me going through each step again using this, then yeah, check out my um, second video. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but yeah, you can see that I've even got rid of the foam. I think it was annoying me in the end, um, protecting the, uh, the cab. Uh, because you get that control with this ne uh, with this uh, needle. Also, when I'm painting the turrets, especially um, tank hunters like this, where I can't just pull the turret off, so I meant the gun. Uh, when I'm painting the gun, where they're fixed in position, uh, use a bit of an old rag, a bit of tissue paper, <laughs> in my case, an old mask that I was going to bin. Um, I just pull that out, sorry, push that underneath the um, barrel, and I use that to protect the paintwork underneath because you don't want you you don't want that beautiful paintwork being um, sprayed over when you're trying to paint the um, barrel. And this is how they looked once they finished the airbrush. So you can see that brown actually looks really good. Um, it's a light. It's not overpowering, so you can make out the green and brown really nicely. If that brown was super dark, it would take away from that lighter green, and it would the green would sort of just fade out and you would be just looking at brown so personally i was very happy with the outcome here i, I was incredibly happy actually so i think i'm going to use that 50 50 combo of brown and white uh, more frequently to sort of get that look and you can see the squiggly lines i've done that again that's purely with the control that you get with the 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle um, and then, yeah, these are the finished products. So that's how I paint them. I'm not somebody that likes to add a lot of mud, a lot of um, dirt and scratches and stuff. Not at this scale. I think it takes away from your hard work with the airbrushing and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it for, for today, guys. Um, sorry, it's a lot of me waffling on. But um, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to uh, reach out and ask. Um, but yeah, please like and subscribe and let me know what you want to see in the future. I've got some more stuff in uh, on the bench, but um, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. But really appreciate your time and thank you very much.